All right, so here we have yet another iPad Mini 2 tablet that came in for bad digitizer connector. As I mentioned in previous videos, digitizer connectors on the iPad Mini 2 or iPad Minis in general are extremely weak. If you push on them very hard or maybe you push the wrong way, you can easily damage the connector. Let me show you how the connector looks like here. All the pins are missing from this side of the connector. In the previous iPad mini digitizer connector videos, we applied solder onto the pads. We put the connector on top of the pre-applied solder. We heated up the connector and everything settled in place. This time maybe we can try to do this by applying solder paste. Let's give it a shot. Okay, I'm glad this component came out so I can show you how components can easily move if you're not careful. This doesn't usually happen, but it did now. Right now we are mixing unleaded with leaded so we can lower the melting temperature of the solder. That way we can easily work the solder off the pads. Now, I have not done this job using solder paste in the past. So we're going to try it right now. The only thing to be concerned about is for solder paste not to flow on the nearby components. I think we should be okay with this amount of solder paste. Okay, so like I said, we are trying this for the first time. I want to see if we can get the connector to solder on with using just solder paste without affecting other components on the board. That will be a nice experiment. If that doesn't work, then we'll clean up and use our old fashioned way of doing it. Just give me a moment. Hello, how are you? Hey, good, how are you? All right, all right. Doing good. I haven't been here in a minute. Uh, I know. Um, What's going do on? Do I need the passcodes in order to for you to fix these? Uh, not really. Okay. So, and what do we need to do on this? I don't know. Fix it, if you can. Uh, does it turn on? I don't know. Can you check? I'm checking now. Okay. Uh, 119 and 109. 119 and 
And that's why I said when you use solder paste, solder paste can flow to other components. I'm also glad that this happened so I can show you. Look at that. Shorts everywhere. And plug the battery and let's power it on. I do not have the power button plugged in, so we're gonna just put the charger in and the tablet's gonna turn on by itself. Okay, so it's not working. What do we do in that case? We're gonna take the connector out and we're gonna use the other method where we apply embedded solder onto the pads and we put the connector on and heat everything down in place. It seems like this method was not successful and it took more time than what it would have taken if I would have done it using the other method. I was just curious to try it and it didn't work. connector is gonna flow in place we're gonna lower the airspeed down to 20 very good now we're gonna raise up the airspeed Let's put airspeed all the way up, 120, and temperature down to maybe 395. Uh, 
and that's it. And let's go ahead and test. And look at that. Touch is working. Would I recommend using solder paste to uh, solder an FVC connector? I don't think so. It appears that it took more time to solder that connector using solder paste than if I would have done it using leaded solder, where we apply leaded solder onto the pads, we put the connector on top, and we flow everything down in place just like we did now. That's a much faster method, and it's a much safer method. When using solder paste, solder paste can flow to a lot of nearby components, creating bridges. Solder paste could also flow and create bridges between the FEC connector pins, and you will have to spend more time cleaning those up, just like you saw where the capacitors uh, connected to each other, and we had bridges on the FEC connector. So I had to remove the connector and redo it using this method. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.